What's up? I'm Brian Tong and welcome to the Apple Byte. It's all the good, the bad, and everything inside the world of Apple. Now we're back from Las Vegas. I've taken a shower from that dirty, dirty place and now my skin is smooth as butter. Now Apple dropped a whole bunch of news at their recent education event in New York and let's start with the iBooks update. It's now called iBooks 2 and it will support digital textbooks from three major textbook publishers that use interactive slideshows, videos, and 3D images for a more engaging textbook experience. There's currently only eight books available that start at $14.99 and they're targeting the K-12 market. It's a nice push for the digital classroom, but reinventing the education system is going to take a lot more than just a 15 buck interactive book with an iPad that has a current entry level price of $499. Now teachers will need to be trained differently to shape their curriculum around this new digital format. And guess what? Not everyone is going to have an iPad unless Apple starts giving them away and you can bet they won't. Now you can beat the hell out of a textbook, but you can't beat up an iPad, and this could also create even a greater digital divide for iPad haves and have nots. Now my take, I really like the idea. My parents and sister are all educators, but this is just a small step in the right direction, and the digital classroom in public education is still years and years away. But what if you wanna create your own books? Apple is making the iBooks author app free for all Mac OS X line users, and only line users, how convenient, but think of it as Keynote and Pages fused together for book creation. It will include Apple design templates, text charts and shapes, the ability to add multi-touch functionality, and you can add your own JavaScript and HTML widgets, and the ability, most importantly, to upload your book directly to the iBook store for purchases by complete strangers. Now it's bringing book publishing to the consumer Apple's way, and finally, I can bring the Brian Tong autobiography to the masses. That's right, Eat your heart out, Walter Isaacson. You should have taken my call. Now in the last piece of education news, iTunes U gets its own free app giving students and non-students access to course material, including video content and documentation and notes. You'll still have to purchase the actual textbooks for most of the classes, but iTunes U becomes a go-to hub for college professors and students and allows them to post messages, send out assignments, and more. For example, I'm learning about volcanoes right now. Whoa, thanks iTunes U. All right, let's take a quick break with a how-to tip for using your iPhone as a keyboard and mouse. Hey guys, Sharon Vacken here to show you how a free app turns your iPhone into a keyboard and mouse that you can use to control your computer from a distance. The use for this might not be obvious, but with this setup, you can connect your computer to your TV and leisurely navigate from the couch or even use your iPhone or any iOS device as a PowerPoint remote. To get started, head to Logitech.com slash TouchMouse on your Mac or PC. Select your OS from the drop-down, hit Download Software, and complete the installation. Now open the new app and grab your iPhone. First, make sure you're currently on the same Wi-Fi network as your computer. That's how your iPhone will communicate with your computer. Now from the App Store, download TouchMouse. When you launch it, select your computer from the list on the screen and you can start controlling your computer right away. To use the mouse, drag one finger around on the virtual trackpad. To select, tap once or select center. To scroll, drag two fingers up and down the trackpad and to prompt the keyboard, tap this icon here. There is also a bunch of settings to play with, so tap the settings button and adjust the app to your liking. For instance, you might want to adjust the scrolling speed or change the clicking sounds. Whenever you're done with the app or want to switch computers, just tap this disconnect button here. And you didn't hear this from me, but quickly installing the TouchMouse server on a friend's computer opens doors to a lot of fun pranking. Thanks for that, Sharon, and that prank has already come in pretty handy. All right, let's talk Apple patents because we're not going to talk about the new make-believe iPad rumors that drop every week, including one from Mako Takara that says they'll be announcing a new iPad in February. That's way too soon, and if they do, I will shave off my armpit hair and mail it in a baggie for the person who wants it. I know you're out there. Now there are plenty of you who want Apple to release the perfect dream TV and patently Apple reports the Big A has been granted a patent relating to a method of organizing episodic content such as TV shows on an Apple TV. Media menu items could correspond to television shows that have either been recorded from a broadcast or purchased from a content provider. It could mean nothing or it could mean DVR capabilities Yep, in the next Apple TV. The patent also mentions an Apple TV working with a cable network. It was filed in 2006 and Steve Jobs is listed as one of its inventors. 
Another patent that has not been granted yet involves taking Siri to another level and hopes to give users the ability to purchase items from online stores using only their voice. It's being referred to as the Intelligent Automated Assistant, and Siri in its current form cannot make purchases yet. The filing also suggests it could be used in Apple's iTunes and App Stores, but Siri could also be integrated with online retailers to purchase through a retailer like Best Buy and then pick up their goods at a local store. Now the Apple and Android battle continues, but a new survey by Nielsen finds that the Cupertino kids are finally closing the gap. Nielsen found over the last three months that customers who purchased a smartphone in the past three months, well 44.5% of them bought iPhones compared to the 469 who purchased an Android phone. Now that's significant because in an October study, just over 25% of people said they went with the iPhone, while 61.6% .6 went with Android. And if you listen to Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, in an interview with Daily Beast comparing iPhones with Android phones, the Woz said, my primary phone is the iPhone. I love the beauty of it, but I wish it did all the things my Android does. I really do. And you know what, he's absolutely right. I also like the Woz because I got a chance to dance with him a few years ago. Any of there we go, and you guys swing what the hips mean? a little. It's all in the hips. Okay, check no. this out. See if you can do this. Okay, you go like this. Oh my gosh! Of course. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Dancing with the walls. <laughs> and he's a really super nice teddy bear kind of guy. All right, guys. Last story in sad news: that realistic, scary-looking Steve Jobs doll we told you about. It looks like the creator is shelving the project after intense legal pressure from Apple and Steve Jobs' family. Probably a good idea. So, the fully posable doll you've all been waiting for is no longer reality, and I'm sorry. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Email us at theapplebite at cnet.com. We'll get to emails when we can, and we keep our favorites. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the apple. Oh, I didn't see you there. Perfect.